afternoon. Uh, the first uh, speaker of this uh, third and last uh, software technology evolution uh, session is Bryce uh, Copy. Bryce is, is, uh, is working at CERN, is a software engineer there in the industrial control systems group since uh, several years. And he will talk about uh, cloud deployment uh, of the CMON, C2MON uh, SCADA system in the CERN cloud infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so I'm going to report about uh, the uh, deployment of uh, C2MON or SCADA to the CERN cloud infrastructure. Um, so first, I'll tell you what, what is C2MON, the CERN control and monitoring platform. I'll explain the potential advantages of uh, putting a SCADA platform like C2MON in the cloud. Uh, we review the, the different uh, options for deployment and what to look out for. So I hope that, well, even if you're not necessarily using the same platform as us, that uh, there will be some, uh, some uh, good input for you if you're considering moving something to the cloud and uh, what to look out for. So C2MON, as I mentioned, C2MON is the CERN control and monitoring platform. Uh, as you can see here, we have a few uh, views of um, uh, what our um, technical infrastructure operators can see in the control room. Uh, C2MON is used um, for many, many things at CERN, but then, um, primarily also for the access control. So here on, uh, on the left-hand side, you have the a view of the status of access control in the LHC tunnel, and on the um, uh, right hand side you have um, um, a monitoring station here. So the design of Citumon is uh, I would say quite conventional. We have um, as, uh, as any SCADA we have uh, um, well, let's, let's start. <laughs> we have a data acquisition uh, layer at the bottom here that does uh, all the acquisition from various industrial control protocols. Some of them are CERN specific, other are industry standards. In the middle, um, um, performing the, the message distribution, the validation, um, we have, in the archiving, we have an active MQ uh, engine. So this provides scalable messaging. So between the DAC and between the client layer at the top, and the client layer, you have um, um, sta um, typical um, user interface engines like uh, uh, JViews, IBM JViews, now Rogue Wave, or, or Web UIs. And so, um, well, what, what are we going to move and, and why move it? So moving to the cloud, the, what, what you'll hear is that the vendors will tell you is that if you move to the cloud, you'll have better reliability, you'll be easier to deploy, and um, you'll have access to um, uh, just more flexibility in your deployments. And what does that mean in practice? Um, so the cloud. In the past four years, the, the cloud has changed quite a lot. Uh, we used to have heavyweight virtual machines, and this has been taken over very, very quickly, I would say, by uh, containers, um, technologies such as Docker. And so you have these small containers, and they get grouped into the small private networks where you have full control over what's going on and what's is escaping to, uh, to out of your, uh, outside of your, of your cloud. And the good thing about this container approach is that everything is self-documented. All your interaction points, uh, network ports, storage, what you expose to other uh, types of containers, all of this is, is documented, it's built in. So you have to define it. And when you define it, the cloud infrastructure is able to use that information to do the best it can for, for your service. And the other thing is that uh, with containers, uh, deployment is much easier because you, uh, you can package everything together, all your dependencies, all your operating system level libraries into a nice binary blob and then ship that to the cloud. It's much easier for, for management. And so as a result, uh, if you're already doing continuous integration, plugging it into a, a container-based cloud is also very easy. At CERN, this is uh, what we have, very, uh, a very broad overview of um, what we have in terms of cloud at CERN. So uh, we have OpenStack. This has really taken over our infrastructure very, very quickly 
replacing all the, the iron machines, uh, actual hardware, by, by virtualized uh, pro uh, projects in OpenStack. On top of OpenStack, you'll find the Red Hat OpenShift and OpenStack Magnum. So these two are container orchestration infrastructures. They let you um, decide what you're going to deploy, what's the scalability parameters you want to associate to your services and your containers. And at the top, you'll find technologies like Docker Swarm and Kubernetes. Now, the onus for uh, OpenShift, the, the focus on OpenShift at CERN is for deploying web uh, websites, web services, web-based applications. So as a result, OpenShift ships with a high availability proxy, and that's our link to the outside world. So without, uh, this is how you get to communicate to the rest of the world. And we find Docker, as I mentioned, pretty much everywhere nowadays. So when you define a container, what do you have to look out for, just in general? I mean, I mentioned that these interaction points are self-documented, they're part of your container definition, and you'll find them here. So uh, you define uh, sorry, network ports here. You can define your storage requirements, because in the cloud, storage is not a given. Most file systems will just be non-persistent. They get created for your container, and when your container is done, the storage goes with it. Uh, you have to define the configuration parameters. It's very important. Your containers are going to be multiplied. They're going to be cloned. And you want to be able to tell them apart from each other or maybe consider them as exact clone uh, of the same uh, application. So co configuration plays an important part in there. And finally, dependencies on other services. So uh, your container may need other containers. Say you have a web application and you need a database server to back it up. Um, there will be dependencies between your, your classes of containers. And these four aspects must be considered carefully. If you're thinking of taking an existing technology and moving it there, these are the, the things you're going to have to uh, define very clearly and, and consider. And containers. So for C2MON, C2MON is a technology relying on ActiveMQ, JMS-based standards. So. Um, it's not exactly a very recent standard. It's very capable, it's very robust, but also it's not up to date with the latest uh, technologies. So um, what does that mean? So when that C2MON exchange, uh, message exchange server is gonna wake up on, on the cloud, how is it gonna react? Well, first, it's gonna be aware of where it's located on the network. Next, it's gonna have to accept some configuration parameters, maybe secrets, passwords to databases, for instance, to, to provide a, a persistent JMS backend. Um, it's gonna need some storage to, to flush the, the overspill of uh, JMS exchanges. If it's going too fast, it needs to, to persist onto the disk until it can be processed. We're gonna have to think about the network connectivity of that JMS cl uh, cluster, and of course, it's gonna depend on other containers. And what does that give? Well, if we look at C2MON in, in, in detail, this is what we get. We get network ports. Ah, C2MON, JMS, relies on fixed ports. And by the way, the HTTP transport don't, don't support high availability. So already something we didn't expect when moving to an environment that was supposed to be flexible and easy for us. Storage. When we get to a cloud, I mentioned that OpenShift is designed for small web websites, small web services. Uh, storage was not designed there in this particular cloud to handle uh, high, high throughput for I.O. And so yet another problem. A configuration, Titumon relies on environment variables, but what if we wanted to have a hierarchical cloud-based configuration system like ARIA, uh, ARIA in um, that you find in Puppet, for instance, or Spring Cloud, you, you, uh, it's not built for that. And finally, service dependencies. Are, are, are the clusters, are the nodes in that cluster be able to locate each other to start collaborating? And it turns out that uh, ActiveMQ uses a multicast, which happens to be disabled in the OpenShift uh, cloud environment. And so, yeah, these are typical pitfalls, and I encourage you, these are classics. I mean, there's more detail in the paper, which I recommend that you have a look at if you're interested in cloud deployments. And so, there's hope. It's, it's still possible to deploy. It doesn't mean that we couldn't put C2MON into the cloud, but we had, to, we had to decide exactly what could be put where. 
I mean, or web-based UI, um, those things like web sockets, uh, broadcasters, they can be very easily deployed into the OpenShift environment, and they're perfect, perfect for that type of, uh, of ecosystem. But the C2 Mon server, as I mentioned, all this JMS ActiveMQ, well, it had to be put on regular OpenStack. We are we're hoping to move to Docker Swarm, but even in terms of uh, networking, host mode networking, open, um, Docker Swarm is, is not ready yet. So, um, so this is what uh, we ended up with. So as a takeaway message, I would say that um, it is a very exciting, exciting time for, for deployments. Uh, containers are very handy. I encourage you to look into them if you haven't done so already. Um, they are, it's, much, it's, a much more, uh, smooth, it's a much smoother experience if you start with fresh new technologies. Um, Kafka messaging, uh, ETCD, Zookeeper, these type of technologies. They will, they will be able to, they will be deployed much more easily. If you start with technologies that were not designed for this, you're gonna have to look m more closely. And, I mean, as we speak about the future, it may be that we're gonna have to upgrade parts of the, our technology stack to make it easier to deploy, or we have to, to stick to what we have today. It will depend uh, really much on where we're, we're heading with the, the cloud platform. So uh, I, um, I hope it was uh, useful to you, and I encourage you to uh, come and speak to me and have a look at uh, the paper. Thank you very much. Many thanks for the nice presentation. Thank we you. have time for a couple of questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you consider to move the or try the OpenStack Magnum for the Simon 2 server? C2 Mon. Yes, um, we tried with Docker Swarm, but uh, there's a there's a known bug that's bugging everybody at the moment with uh, host mode networking on Docker Swarm. So we we have to wait for the central infrastructure to upgrade to a, a minor version upgrade that will uh, solve a, a well-known bug. But we, we tried really hard. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a good alternative to, to Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we'll see where it goes, yeah. Okay, but, but this is exactly what I'm suggesting, to use the OpenStack Magnum Kubernetes support. Yeah. Because it, it, it can help you to solve some of your pitfalls. For example, the, the storage, it provides OpenStack Manila. You, you mean in Docker Swarm? No, in, op in, open in OpenStack Magnum, in Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd have to go back to that slide. Um, yeah. But you see, uh, yeah, we, yes. we, we certainly looked at this route. Uh, we looked at that. But as I said, there's, a, there's currently, at the moment, it's going to be resolved pretty soon, but currently there's a known bug in Docker Swarm that doesn't let you run known ports um, on uh, containers in, in host mode networking. So uh, for the rest, uh, it, it could work really well, yeah. We're hoping. Thanks. Thanks again.